What is going on, beautiful folks? Welcome to another episode of Mornings with Lee Hammock. Lee, your favorite self-aware narcissist. Super early, y'all. Today, we're going to be talking about how narcissists always want you to remember the good times. The good times, the good things that have happened in our relationship, in your relationship. They always want you to focus on the, the good stuff. Realistically, they, they love it. Like, this just me being, y'all yeah, know I got to keep it hot and ready. Like, if you ever break up with a narcissist or they break up with you or whatever, and somehow, they, and somehow, some way, shape, or form, they get back in contact with you. They want to talk to you again, right? They, um, something's going, something has happened, and they end up reaching out to you, writing, you know, writing, sending you a long email, um, long text message, um, a voice note, a writing a letter or something along those lines. A lot of times, they'll apologize for everything, right? They'll say, I'm sorry for everything. Sorry for hurting you, blah, 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 boo, boo, boo. But then they also want you to focus on the good times. They also want you to focus on the good memories, the, the, the things that put the things that paint them and the relationship in a good light. They don't want you to focus on the bad stuff because they don't like, and it's going to sound weird, y'all, because of how a lot, a lot of narcissists treat people. It's going to sound weird. They don't want you to focus on the good times because, I mean, the bad times because they don't want people thinking negatively about them. Yeah, yeah, you hear that, you hear that correctly. Narcissists don't want people to think negatively of them. They don't want people to sit right there and have a bad, like a bad aftertaste from them because narcissists, a lot of them, a lot of us care so much about our reputations and about how we, we're going to be viewed that we hyper focus on what people think about us, right? We hyper, hyper focus on what people are feeling about us and things, things like that. So this happens so much. It is crazy how how much this happens. Like narcissistic people will cheat on you, right? And have a kid by somebody else, get pregnant by somebody else. Like, and somehow in this long letter or you know this 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 goodbye or whatever, see you later type thing, they'll focus on the good stuff. You mean we took that trip? To France, and we rode on the river. We we're rolling, rolling, rolling down the river. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, Tina Turner lyrics. Roll, do, 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 do. <laughs> um, but they'll do stuff like this, y'all, because they want to be remembered in a good light. They always will send you things to focus on the good stuff. You don't need to focus on the good times. It's yeah, it's a trap. Yeah, you might remember the good times. They, they they'll try to get you to remember the good times because a lot of times they want to come back into your life in some way, shape, or form. They want to step back into your space. They want to come back around and be in your life again in some way, shape, or form. They want to come back. They want to be back in your space. So yes, they absolutely will try to get you to focus on how good they were to you and not the bad stuff, not their actual reason that y'all might not be together again. Because this, in the end, this benefits them in some way, shape, or form. This benefits them. They they want this right here. They want to be remembered uh, for the good stuff. They want to have the good memories. They they yeah. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. And the more you remember the bad stuff, right? The more, the more you remember the good stuff, the more apt. The more the more you might want to go back. So don't go back into it. When they're sending, like, if they send you a long letter after they treated you horribly, I would tell you not to read it anyway. If you're in no contact with this person and they write you a long letter, send you a long, find a way to send you a long email or text message or something like that, don't read it. I know a lot of y'all are like, I need this closure, Lee. I'm going to read it. But a lot of times, this right here is a, is this long, remember the good times, is a form of a Hoover. Or if y'all are going through some type of divorce or something, it's a way to get you to try to take it easy on them. They want you to remember the good times because they don't want you to take it so hard on them in a divorce. Like they don't want you to take as many assets. They don't want you to get child support. They don't want you to get alimony. Whatever it is, they want you to be like they want. They want. Uh, hey, I know things were bad and ended badly, but I, I hope you know that I'm a good person. I've always had a good intent, and I always believe on you. With all of that being said, the state of California allows you to get fifty percent alimony. For the next like fourteen thousand dollars a month alimony for the next 15 years that will financially cripple me and my new family and the start of my new life can you please 
just take no alimony and trust me. Trust the fact that I'll just give it to you on the side. I'll pay you behind the scenes. Trust me. I know I've been lying the whole marriage. I know I've been cheating on you the whole marriage. But this is right here. You should trust me out. Sincerely, yours forever. Well, not forever. But maybe. I moved on. No, you don't move on to me. Don't do that. You see how stupid that sounds? They will try to get you to take it easy on them. They, like, like I said, money, especially if it's money involved, money is extremely important to narcissistic people. It just is one of those things. Money is super important to this type of person. So with that being said, they're going, they're always a lot of narcissists are going to be money motivated or ownership motivated. Like they don't want to see you with anybody else so much so that they'll try to come back into your life and ruin it like by being good to you. Like they're being nice to you out of nowhere. And you're it, this is strange to you. They haven't been nice to you in months or years or whatever. Now all of a sudden they're nice out of nowhere. Don't trust it. That's why I say don't read a long love letter that they write you because there's no benefit in it. You know, there's hardly any benefit benefit in it. I know some people are like, well, Lee, my closure might be in this letter. Your closure, it could should come from you. And the fact that they have to write you a letter, the fact that they have to send you an email from a fake email address, that should show you because they're blocked. That's your closure right there. The closure is the fact that they are blocked and they're no longer part of your life. That's your closure right there. But I, I know some people, that's not enough to some people. They have this different vision of what closure looks like for them. Like, yeah, like you need to have one final conversation with this person. Like you need to do one final. No, let, yeah, let the disrespect, let the lies, let the lack of love, the lack of good treatment, let that be the closure that you need. Closure is not this this myth, mythical thing that you get from some toxic, this toxic narcissistic person. Closure is something that you have to give for your give to yourself. And then reading this letter, sending one back, like going back and forth, because this is open. Like if you, if they've been blocked forever, this just, and you write back to them or respond to this letter, this just opens up the pathway of communication for them, and they feel great. They're like my letter worked, my letter worked. You know, they're like Aaliyah sending you a full page letter. I wouldn't read it. Because the thing, the thing that happens in these some of these relationships, if you were to want, if you were the one that sent the letter, that sent this out, they probably wouldn't read yours. You know, they wouldn't read your letter. They wouldn't read your note. They wouldn't read it because this, they don't, they wouldn't feel like it benefited them. You know what I mean? They wouldn't feel like it benefited them, so they wouldn't read your stuff. So yeah, I had to hop off this thing. That's one on ones this morning. Um, if you're interested in my support groups and my courses, courses.mentalillness.net is right there. Check it out. Um, follow my other page called Lee Actions, and we will chat later, y'all. As always, Mental Hillness is out. Peace. Thank you so much for making it to the end of my video. I am extremely grateful for you have no idea. If you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Helps reach more people. And click on the screen to watch another video or to browse through another playlist. There's also a link on the screen to check out my courses and my support groups to help you heal and understand what you've been through. Thank you so much again.